welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the UK in November. It's a typically grizzly, miserable, wet, rainy day. So I thought I'd come out and make a video about riding in the rain. Just give you a few tips and hints to keep yourself safe. As ever, we want to stop you from falling off and we want to stop you from being knocked off. But just before I get into the video, a little bit of news. If you didn't see my last video, um, I've uh, just brought a new book out. It's not a full new book. It's a second edition of my first book, which came out about five years ago. Uh, it's called Advanced and Performance Driving. Don't let that put you off if you're a motorcyclist. There's loads of stuff in there. Uh, whatever kind of road user you are, there's loads of stuff to help you improve, get better, more safer. And to help you enjoy your driving and riding more. I probably will do a motorcycling book at some point in the future. Uh, but the new edition, the second edition of Advanced and Performance Driving has got uh, four new chapters in it. And uh, a surprise postscript. Probably not that much of a surprise actually if you're watching this video. Uh, but I'll let you find out for yourself. So if you want to get hold of a copy of that book, they're available on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below. You can get it in paperback or Kindle e-reader format. If you've already bought the Kindle version, you'll get a free update, so it won't cost you anything. Anyway, back to the video. We're going to talk today, like I said, about riding in the wet. Now, you may be one of those motorcyclists who chooses never to ride when it's raining. And I am not going to criticise you for that. Most people these days who ride bikes do it for fun or for pleasure. Less and less people who have to ride a motorbike. So if you only do this at weekends or for, for as a leisure pursuit, well, you can choose your days, can't you, when you come out? You don't have to come out on days like this if you don't want to, and who am I to criticise for that? However, even for those people, there may be a day where you get caught out. Remember where we live. Uh, the weather always changes in the UK, doesn't it? We can't really trust weather forecasts, so, you know, you may get a couple of hours out into your ride and the weather might turn. You might get your emergency waterproof out your, out your rucksack. And then how are you going to feel if that's the first time that you've ridden in the wet? So let's have a look at it. I'm going to split it down into the sort of practicalities and preparation you need to do if you're going to ride in the wet. How to, you know, how to keep your visibility. What to do with your helmet and visor and kit and all that kind of stuff. And then I'll have a look at um, the sort of adjustments that you need to make for your riding when the weather's like this. Uh, with a few small adjustments actually, riding in this weather does not have to be, A, it doesn't have to be particularly risky, it doesn't increase the risk very much really, as long as you bear a few things in mind. Uh, and the other surprising thing about riding in the wet these days, as long as you've got a good set of modern tyres on the bike, is that modern tyres, are, are, you know, as long as you choose the right one, they are phenomenally good in wet weather. It's amazing just how much you can lean on tyres in wet weather. Not that I'm encouraging you to do that, but um, just to give you a little bit of confidence. So let's start with the prep. Um, one of the things you've really got to maintain at all times when you're on the bike is a good view of the road ahead. Now that sounds obvious, but we haven't got windscreen wipers, I haven't got a demister. I have a visor on the front of the helmet and very quickly that gets covered in rain and it will easily steam up if we don't uh, if we don't do the right things. So a couple of little tips for you. Get a visor with a pin lock if you haven't already and put the pin lock in. Make sure the mating surfaces of the pin lock and the visor are nice and clean before you fit it so you don't get any gaps. You want that pin lock completely in contact right across its width. Uh, and then make sure the outside of your visor is really clean. So I, I use a, a cleaner, a sort of cleaner spray, clean all the dirt and bugs off it. And then I use a waterproofing spray. I use this Nick Wax waterproofing spray, but there's other ones. Pretty cheap from Amazon or eBay. Um, and what I tend to do with that is give it a good spray, then wipe it off. And then spray it again, just mist it on and leave it just for a few minutes, just to start getting tacky or drying a little bit and then just polish the visor and that usually leaves a good coating of that rain repellent on the visor. 
Um, and what it does basically is it, it makes the water bead on the visor. Um, water collects in large beads, large droplets on the visor. They tend to run off or blow off when you're up at speed. Usually as soon as you get above 30 miles an hour. I'm going to try and keep this lens clean as we're going along today. I have put some of the water repellent on the, on the lens as well, but bear with me. Whenever I remember, I'll try and give it a wipe. Um, and then your other issue is steaming up on the inside of the visor. Now a pin lock makes a massive difference. It's a bit like double glazing for your, um, for your visor. Uh, but I would also advise you just to have any vents on the front of your helmet open as well. Get a good airflow coming through. You want some fresh air coming in from outside. You're not going to get wet. It's just going to draw the fresh air in from outside. Get a bit of flow over the visor. Just the same as you do in the car when you put your demister on. Blow it on the windscreen. And that'll keep the inside of your visor nice and free from misting up. Nice car fella. <laughs> Um, other tips with your kit, you put your gloves on, tuck your gloves in your sleeves, by which I mean you want your sleeves over your gloves, you don't want to tuck your sleeves into your gloves. You tuck your sleeves in your gloves, first time it starts raining the rain runs down your arms, down into your gloves and soaks your hands. So always have the sleeves on the outside of your gloves. Um, and as far as the kit that you use, get, get the best kit that you can afford. I normally have a, a Daneasy Gore-Tex jacket. Unfortunately, the Gore-Tex has failed on the sleeves and it's a way of being checked and I'm expecting to get a replacement for that. So they've actually lent me a, a, a replacement jacket while that's being checked in Italy. Um, this is Gore-Tex as well. Gore-Tex is a sort of membrane that sits underneath the outer fabric uh, and it allows sort of moisture from your body, sweat to wick out, but it doesn't allow rain to come through, the larger drops of rain to come through. Uh, one thing to bear in mind actually, if you have Gore-Tex gloves um, and you have heated grips, is that <laughs> heated grips don't work well with Gore-Tex gloves. What they do is, the, the, the Gore-Tex membrane doesn't know which, which direction to work in, it works in either direction. So what you tend to find is that you've got your hands on the, uh, on the heated grips, it heats the glove up and it sort of makes the uh, makes the moisture wick in the other direction. So um, if you wear Gore-Tex gloves, and I recommend that you do because, you know, during the summer, though, if it's raining, they'll keep your hands dry. Um, you've got a choice between having cold, dry hands or warm, wet hands. And I tend to go with the warm, wet hands. Nobody wants to have cold hands, do they? So if it's cold and raining, um, don't be surprised if, you, if your Gore-Tex gloves start to feel like they're leaking through. They're not leaking, it's just the Gore-Tex working in the opposite direction. Uh, I'm told a lot of people take the gloves back to the shop and get them changed. Um, and then just keep complaining about them, but it's actually a misunderstanding about how Gore-Tex works. And what about prep on the bike? Well, you don't need to make any changes to your bike. Um, I, I don't tend to run this in its hardest suspension setting. On this bike it's really easy, it's just a flick of the thumb on the switch, but I tend to run it in the road setting. Um, the other thing is that a lot of modern bikes have uh, adjustable throttle maps or riding modes as they tend to call them. This one has four. It has Road, Dynamic, Dynamic Pro and it has a rain setting and in this bike on the rain setting what that does is wind the power delivery down a little bit. It, it really gives you a much more linear throttle. So the power delivery from low up to higher revs is nice and smooth and controllable. And actually on this bike it sort of tones the power down as well. I think you get 100 brake horsepower instead of the full 165 when it's in rain mode. Um, now again, that, that that's something that's pretty much being fitted to most modern bikes these days, but not everybody rides a modern bike. So there are some adjustments you can make to your riding if you haven't got adjustable throttle modes and that's just you know not winding the bike right on not revving it right out in the high gears change up to a uh, sorry in the low gears change up to a higher gear a little bit earlier use the bike's torque rather than the bike's top end power and we'll talk about that in a little bit so yeah you don't need to faff about changing your tire pressure as long as you check your tire pressures regularly you don't need to change them for the wet um, 
put it in the in the softer roll setting if you've got adjustable suspension but actually the biggest thing that you need to know about modern bikes in the wet is on on a good set of modern tires they've got plenty of grip so you don't need to worry about tipping it over at low or even at higher speeds um, I, uh, I mentioned before I run with Michelin Road 5 tyres um, and they're a really really good sort of road tyre now if, you, if you're somebody who rides a sports bike and you've got those really sporty tyres with very little tread soft compound um, they're not ideal for coming out in the wet I have to say so you know if you get caught out in a shower you're going to have to be extra careful if you're running those kind of tyres but a good set of sports touring tyres road orientated tyres rather than track orientated tyres will always serve you really well in the wet and it's quite surprising how much you can lean a bike over in the wet as well and how much you can lean on the brakes as long as your tyres are in good condition and your pressures are good so what else well really good tip in the wet is make all your inputs nice and smooth and gradual um, remember that any input that you give to the bike is translated down through the tyres and through the tyre uh, the tyres contact patch with the road which is only small and when it's raining there is less grip so the, you, you've less to play with so if we suddenly expect the bike to break suddenly or tip into a corner suddenly or you expect to give it a real good wind on the throttle then you've got to very quickly use up all the tyres grip now I'm not saying that you can't brake firmly or lean the bike over, but you've got to do it gradually. You don't want to sneak up on the bike, you don't want to make it jump. You're going to roll into corners, you're going to roll on and off the brakes, nice and smooth and controlled. And like I said before, I'm not winding it on right up through the gears, I know I'm in a 30 limit at the moment, but I will tend to change up a little bit earlier, use the torque of the bike to make it accelerate rather than revving it right round. Again, we want to make use of, or best use of the amount of grip that we've got with that rear tyre I don't want to use it all up by getting close to the point where the wheel's spinning now again at modern bike I've got ABS and traction control and stuff like that that helps me keep control of the bike but actually if I'm getting to a point where those lights are flashing on the dashboard and the bike's using those systems then I'm getting it wrong and as good as these systems are they're um, you, know, you can't overcome physics so they're not going to save me from absolute lunacy so every input that you make on the bike try and ease it in you can build the forces up but just ease it in it's a bit like a that comparison with firing a gun i'm told that you don't pull the trigger you squeeze the trigger i just want you to squeeze every control on the bike don't just suddenly expect it to uh, to react to your inputs so then we've got to think about the practicalities of getting the bike down the road nice and safely so you know first thing i'd say is all these good um practices of long observations and looking well in the distance and planning go and have a look at some of the other videos for that they all especially work very well in the wet because what that allows you to do then is make your plans early decide what you're going to do nice and early and you're not then relying on your reactions you're not suddenly expecting a sudden application of brakes or to suddenly swerve and avoid something if you're seeing things well in advance like this chap getting into his van i can make an adjustment to the left just in case anything comes around the corner rather than being suddenly caught by surprise by somebody as they pull out to pass the van so let's have a look at road surfaces then what do we need to know about road surfaces when it's wet well road surfaces aren't the best at the moment anyway are they? local authorities haven't got a lot of money to spend on resurfacing roads so they get patched up and we get potholes and we get loose surfaces and areas where puddles form and drains blocked and all the rest of it so that's just something we're going to have to accept let's make sure then that we look down the road well in advance and we spot any of these issues we spot any of these defects in the road surface before we get to them so it's a pothole don't look at it if it's a manhole cover don't look at it look at the gap to the next of it because remember you look at something you'll ride towards it target fixation is a real thing if you look at something you will go towards it so see a pothole look at the gap next to it not at the pothole itself now on a normal tarmac surface like this tarmac adam metal road surface asphalt whatever you want to call it um, 
these surfaces work pretty well in, in allowing water to drain off so you don't get a lot of standing water on here and I'm actually riding just on a surface that is damp it's a damp road surface it's got some moisture to it um, and under normal circumstances with nothing else affecting the road surface itself then tarmac is fine in the damp you know I could use the brakes I can use the accelerator I can lean the bike over on tarmac like this and I'll get a good amount of grip back from those tyres problem with tarmac comes when it starts breaking up where you get other areas right away from this and you know other little things that you need to be aware of on the road surface like ironwork because by ironwork I mean pothole covers grids like that one there and on the left access ports for gas you know fire hydrants it's all kinds of these cast iron access holes in the road surface and cast iron especially when it's wet does not have a lot of grip and one thing I'll tell you about manhole covers is whoever decides where manhole covers go has never ridden a motorbike because they always tend to put them right where you want to be um, now we've talked about positioning before if a manhole cover is on a straight piece of road and we are just riding along in a straight line then there's not really any issue as long as we're not accelerating or braking or expecting the bike to do anything but as soon as it's in a corner or as soon as you, you need to give an input to the bike then a manhole cover or a grid could be a real problem a bit like a cattle grid so if you have to pass over iron work in the road manhole cover like that one if you have to ride over it or, or a cattle grid for that matter you want to ride over it on a neutral throttle completely upright without braking without accelerating and without leaning the bike over if you do that it'll be perfectly fine if however you need to give the bike an input you need to brake or move the bike or it's halfway around a corner do your utmost to avoid that ironwork in the road because it will make the bike move sideways if you're lent over now one of the problems again with riding in the wet is it gives a sheen to the to the road surface and it makes it more difficult to spot those defects like that uh, manhole cover there so again get your eyes in the distance but keep them in the mid distance as well don't just scan in the far distance look in the mid distance that's where you're going to get a view of the manhole covers and it should give you time to look at the gap next to it and ride around it rather than over it now another thing to watch out for on any kind of road surface is uh, the white paint now on a dry day the white paint has a fair amount of grip it's not quite as grippy as dry tarmac but it's got a texture to it and it's got a fair amount of grip and it's reasonably safe to ride on the white paint on a wet road however uh, white paint can be really really slippery it has significantly less grip than the tarmac itself so same rules for the ironwork you can ride over it on a neutral throttle upright in a straight line that's fine but if you're on white paint there's white arrows on the road big slow on the road direction signs white lines anything like that try to avoid riding on it if you have to cross white lines for any reason cross them reasonably quickly don't spend forever rolling across them uh, one thing that's it generally is more difficult to spot as well when it's wet is, uh, is other su other substances if you like on the road surface so mud is more difficult to spot when it's wet it goes darker um, got to watch out for wet leaves and again at this point at this time of the year November they get compressed and squashed into a mulch that can really hide itself especially when it's dark as well it can really hide itself on the road surface so I'll be very careful with those other things one thing that can stand out during the daytime is uh, oil if you get any oil or diesel that kind of fluid mixed in with the water you get that sort of rainbow effect so that's always worth uh, looking out for and you'll always smell diesel as well there's one thing that gets a motorcyclist's attention full on it is diesel on the road surface right, if you get that smell you know that you'll wind off the gas 
you'll wind it back a little bit and just just relax a little bit so you see me pottering around a little bit what about moving the bike on a little bit more well, let's get on this national speed limit road and what you'll see is that I'm I'm not holding the lower gears as long I'm not revving the bike out as much I'm changing up a little bit earlier than I would do on a dry day I'm probably quite a bit earlier than I would do on a dry day and maybe in second or third through that corner when it's dry today I'm in fourth I'm not avoiding braking I'm just making sure that all my inputs are tapered and smooth I am looking for puddles and standing water I'll talk about standing water in more detail in a minute but a damp road surface on a road like this doesn't mean that you have to really crawl along it's nowhere near freezing today all I'm doing is just being smoother with the bike's controls not afraid of leaning into the corners not afraid of using the brakes where I need them and actually as far as visibility goes a little bit of speed is better it blows some of that water off the visor so I would definitely be in third on a dry day around that one today I'm in fourth other than that the same principles apply I've got to be careful with the near side position because that's where the standing water will be but honestly you can still enjoy motorcycling when the weather's like this might not be something you choose to go out and do very often but if you get caught out in it it's nothing to be scared of so what about standing water well standing water is a problem if it builds up a wedge between a, a wedge of water between your tyre and the road surface um, that's otherwise known as aquaplaning you'll have heard the term aquaplaning I'm sure it's when the tyre starts floating on top of the the water we want to really avoid that on a bike it's bad enough in a car we want to really avoid it on a bike So the first thing I'd say about standing water is never ever ride into any standing water unless you know exactly how deep it is and if that requires you to get off the bike and go and have a paddle then so be it you should also be aware of where all the electrics are on your bike where the air intake is for the engine because you don't want to draw any water into the engine but once you've decided that the standing water is okay for you to ride through the best tip is to stick the bike in first gear go through it on a walking pace get some revs on slip the clutch hold the bike back on the back brake and what we're doing there is we're trying to keep the engine revs and the exhaust blowing out so it's not drawing any water into the exhaust pipe Now for this overtake for instance when I can see there's a break in the lines I'm going to leave the bike in fourth I'd probably be down to second in the dry but I just want to ride the torque so you can still ride reasonably progressive, progressively still get the overtakes in not a problem roundabouts can be a, a bit of a problem especially when it's wet if a car or a vehicle is going to spill some diesel or oil on the road it's going to slosh out on a roundabout so always be careful on roundabouts always have a good look at the road surface as you go around them especially where you're near industrial estates and things like that where there's lorries and HUVs and things knocking about um, pedestrians as well let's, let's mention pedestrians pedestrians always used to frighten me to death when I was doing response driving in the police or even when I was teaching response driving because um, they can do anything and I think I've mentioned this in a previous video you do not know what's going on in any of those pedestrian heads if you see a driver or a cyclist you can make a bit of a judgment as to how competent they are uh, you never know what's going on with um, with pedestrians they might be drunk they might be having a bad day they might be deaf they might be visually impaired they might not be thinking about things in the way you would normally expect them to and when it's raining the problem with pedestrians is they, they are much more bothered about getting wet than they are about getting run over 
so they'll have the hoods up, they'll have their earphones in, they'll be staring down at the phone, they'll be running, be in a rush to get to the bus shelter, in a rush to get into the house or the building, um, and that's the priority. The priority is not crossing the road safely. So uh, treat pedestrians, especially in busy areas, with, with a great deal of caution. Don't be afraid of using the horn just to warn people. In a friendly way, you want to get their attention. Might not always work. Don't always expect it to work. If they've got earphones in, hood up, they might not hear you. But give, give yourself as much chance as you can with pedestrians that they will see you and react to you. And the added thing at the moment with coronavirus is that they'd rather step into the road to avoid another pedestrian um, and step in front of you to do that. They'd rather put themselves at, uh, at risk of being run over than at risk of well, the very, very negligible risk of catching coronavirus from passing somebody in the street. So let's go and uh, bob on the motorway. Let's have a chat about motorway riding when it's wet. So, what do we need to think about on the motorway? Well, the biggest issue for us on the motorway when it's raining is the spray. The spray that's thrown up from all the other vehicles. In fact, actually it can stop raining, uh, but spray can still be an issue for a good hour or so after the last rain's fallen. So, we need to make adjustments to our following position. We need to drop back a little bit off other vehicles. And we need to make sure we keep ourselves visible for those other vehicles as well. So here we're joining the motorway, I've got a good gap behind, looking over my shoulder, putting a signal on. So here for instance, under normal circumstances, I would be two seconds behind the car in front. Uh, at the moment I'm probably one, two, three, four seconds back. Um, and it looks as though your visibility is pretty poor in these conditions, but actually if you look in between the vehicles, get a good view of the road ahead. Um, avoid staring at the spray and looking between the vehicles, you'll get a good view of the road ahead. Would have heard me particularly well. Thanks for the early signal there, fella. On the motorway, but just to recap on those tips. Sit further back from vehicles in front of you, try and stay out of the spray, try and keep a good view of the road ahead. Look in between the vehicles rather than at the back of vehicles, that's where the spray is. Uh, move your position as well on the, uh, on the bike, you, you have a little bit more room to play with, with your position in the lanes on the motorway just to improve your view. Um, and the other thing on the motorways is try and stay out of those tyre marks. So in lane one, that's where the heavy goods vehicles uh, tend to wear lane one more than anything. That's where they sit. The weight of those vehicles tends to wear two tyre tracks into the tarmac or the road surface. So stay out of those, because that's where the water will collect on a wet day. And we want to keep our tyres in contact with the tarmac, with as little water underneath them as possible. So that's it for this video, how to ride in the wet. If you live in the UK, at some point you're going to have to ride in the wet. You're going to go out, you're going to get caught out in it. Or if you choose to commute on the bike like I do, you have to make a decision early on that you need the right kit and, uh, and you're going to ride it every day, irrespective of the weather. It's not a challenge, it's not a macho thing or anything like that. Um, it's just the reality of riding in this country. And even if you just ride for, for leisure or to enjoy yourself, it is worth getting out in the wet every now and again. You know, you might go away for a few days on the bike, you can't guarantee what the weather's going to be like. So you don't want to be utterly terrified the first time the rain starts to come down. And if you do an advanced driving course with the IMA Rosper, with the monitoring organisations, if you come to me for a test at the end of your course, we won't be cancelling it just because it's raining. I will risk assess every test on the day. Normally the only weather conditions where I'd end up cancelling a test for safety reasons would be ice and snow or some horrendous hurricane that was coming through. Other than that, remember it's an advanced riding test and we have to deal with whatever conditions suit. We sometimes book those tests in a couple of weeks in advance, we can't guarantee what the weather's going to be like. So don't ring us up the day before and say, oh, it's going to rain tomorrow, can we postpone it? Not, not for that reason. Lots of reasons we can postpone the test, obviously, but uh, not purely because of the weather. 
just make the right adjustments to your riding. I want to see that you're taking into account the fact that it's raining, that you've made the right adjustments, your kit's okay, and that you're making the sort of adjustments that I've talked about in this video. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, etc. etc. Have a look at the website as well, reglocal.com. Don't forget the new books out, like I mentioned at the start of the video. Advanced and performance driving. Don't be put off by that if you're just into bikes. There's loads of stuff in there if you uh, if you ride the bike and take away from it. Just in time for Christmas. And uh, give us a follow as well on Twitter at reglocal. But I'm going to get home now and get dried off. Have a cup of tea. So thanks for watching. Thanks for coming out with me in the rain. I'll see you next time.